Hi everyone, thanks for inviting me to talk to the FTT Identity Forum today. Um, we're really ex I'm really excited to talk about how Shawbrook track customer identity, but in a way that suits them. Um, I'm Antonia Bell, and I'm the technical portfolio owner of our savings division. I, before I start, I do need to warn you, I am actually eight months pregnant. So although I'm not going to be rushing to the hospital at any point, I do need to breathe quite a lot, um, sharing my lung capacity with a little person at the moment. So apologies for that. So talking about Shawbrook savings and how we used an adaptive technology to make our customer journey secure and specifically for our customer demographic. So as everyone knows, the strong customer authentication concept was issued by the FCA in January 2018 as part of PSD2. And at that time, our savings division wasn't in scope. And Shilbrook are really proud of our savings division. We provide accounts for personal and business customers, and that fund, they fund 85% of our business. So given that they're independent accounts and not defined as or tied to current accounts, we notified the FCA at that time that we weren't in scope. Our accounts are very secure because customers nominate just one account and money can only enter or leave that savings verified account. So this provides a really secure loop for our customers. However, we did add SCA to our 2020 roadmap, and we did this for three reasons. So I'm just going to show you these on the next slide. So this is our 2020 roadmap. So firstly, research from our customers showed that our current, that the current security method of using a memorable word, as well as other security settings, was actually causing friction for our customers. Uh, many customers logged on very infrequently, given the type of low transaction account. So they actually struggled to remember their memorable word, <laughs> ironically. So our operations teams were having to reset their memorable word about a thousand times a month. And we just thought this journey could be much better for our customers. Secondly, in a time where online fraud is increasing substantially, we wanted to take any possible solution to increase additional security features for our customers, and make them feel safe. And thirdly, around that time, regulatory interpretations across the industry has now gradually widened the scope of PSD2. Um, following exchanges between building societies and the FCA. So, how did we introduce new technology to our customers to keep their identities watertight, but without alienating them with new technology that they weren't familiar with? So, from the start of the project, we were very clear that we wanted to keep the customer in mind. Shawbrook used an excellent phrase called bring the customer into the room. And we're always looking for ways to help us be easier to do business with. I'm not going to use the term, but everyone has an opinion <laughs> about what the customer wants. And this isn't about guessing what the customer wants. It's about actually bringing them into the room and finding out from customers what's suitable for them. And this approach meant we went live with one of our most impactful changes for savings customers. And it was extremely successful. In fact, we received very few customer queries upon go live. And we received excellent feedback on day one of Go Live, which I'll show you on the next slide.
So, how did we do this? So we did this by understanding our customer demographic and guiding the solution towards them. So the majority of Surebrook savings customers, they're not building up savings. They have pots of savings ready to save. So they tend to put their savings in accounts up to that 85,000 FSCS limit. And they tend to spread it across lots of accounts. So you can imagine people with these this sort of money are uh, tend to be 60 years plus retired. Um, so they like a really simple and very secure journey without any hassle. And when we make changes, they like these changes to be really transparent and easy. So when we designed the journey, we made sure that everything was very simple and very clear. And crucially, we didn't want to use new technology that would overcomplicate things. We wanted to use technology that they already had access to and they were familiar to, familiar with, sorry. Secondly, communications to customers well in advance. And this meant that they had time to prepare, time to ask questions, time to give feedback. And the simple solution that we came to was to send a one time password to a registered mobile phone, which we believed everyone had access to. So when the project started, a few, a handful of customers told us that actually we realised that they didn't have a mobile phone on their account. So what we did was five months ahead of go live. We updated all our website, we sent lots of communications, regular communications to customers, saying if you want to take advantage of this new secure service, please register your mobile phone number with us and ask any questions you'd like. And we now have 95% of customers with registered mobiles. So thirdly, it was about listening to our customer feedback and adapting the solution accordingly. So we actually received feedback from a handful of customers to say they didn't have signal on their mobile phone at their home, or they didn't have a mobile phone at all, which surprised us. So we looked at several different solutions to make this easy for our customers. And the solution that we eventually landed on was to bring a third party in who could send the passcode in a recorded message to landlines. And this um, approach was su supported by the FCA as well. So the next one was learning from other banks and just allowing familiar familiarity to grow in the market. So with our demographic, we didn't want to be the first with this technology because we just thought the unfamiliarity would have caused confusion and it wouldn't have been necessary. So one-time passwords have been actually been in the market for quite some time now, as I'm sure you know, with your own bank account and with savings accounts, PayPal, um, it's, it's quite known in the market now, so it's not a new and scary piece of technology. And then finally, that all important go live date. So our solution was actually ready in December, but we thought it was quite sensible to avoid the Christmas period. As you know, people are out getting presents, seeing family, although not so much seeing family this year, unfortunately. Um, and we really wanted to go live at a time when they could access the system, concentrate on it, ask us any questions. And we also wanted our operations teams to be full capacity. And we, so we avoided that peak holiday season so that our customers would have that, the colleagues there to really support them if they needed anything. 
So the last slide is just a nice summary of this project, which has now gone live very successfully. Um, and the project was an excellent example of how to achieve really successful outcomes by listening to your customers and keeping it simple for them. It's very tempting to bring in new technology because it's shiny and new and exciting for us, but actually the most successful thing you can do is to think about what the customer wants and what the customer's comfortable with. So we're going to continue to take this approach for future projects and we always constantly review our customer satisfaction and survey scores so that we can find areas of improvement bring in new technology and make sure that that fits them their journey and helps them feel as secure as possible thank you